Welcome and good evening. I am Madam Sonata, and I'd like to introduce to you to some of the scientists who help us to understand the shape of that twisted ladder of life, the spiral staircase holding the secrets of all living matter, that blueprint of every organism's development, that constitution that dictates the laws by which living matter must follow. <coughs> oh, please excuse me. My passion for the DNA molecule carries the sheer intensity of Shia LaBeouf's Just Do It speech on steroids. But anyway, to be more precise, their contribution was to help in us understand the structure of a DNA molecule. I'd like to bring you back to the year 1916, where our first scientist, Maurice Wilkins, was born in New Zealand. His parents, however, came from the land of leprechauns, St. Patrick's, four-leaf clovers, and good old potato famines, Ireland. Wilkins grew up, uh, grew up and on to study physics at St. John's College, Cambridge, earning his degree in 1938. Then he went on to Birmingham University, earning his PhD in 1940. After the next couple of years, he became the bomb. As you teeny boppers might say, Wilkins worked in making bombs and even was a part of the Manhattan Project. At one point, it was suspected that Wilkins may have leaked information about the project, but suspicion later lost focus. After the war, Wilkins felt guilt over his partaking in the project, but went on to focus on physics research. Our other scientist, Rosalind Franklin, was born July 25, 1920, to a hoity-toity British Jewish family in London, England. Miss Nazzy Pants attended a private day school in her younger years. Later, she went on to study natural science triples at Newham College, from which she graduated in 1941. From there, she joined the University of Chicago Physical Laboratory under Ronald George Rayfield Garish, from whom she found to be a letdown due to his lack of enthusiasm. Rosalind was often thought of as a kind of a heart, but stubborn, short-tempered, and overall difficult to work with. But luckily for her, she had the opportunity to leave the University of Chicago and join the British Coal Utilization Research Association, or the BCURA, in 1942. Her work there then helped her obtain her PhD in 1945. It was at the King's College that the two were paired up to work together. However, with Rosalind's short-tempered nature, the two did not exactly see eye to eye. Wilkins, darling, dear. You are the reason the gene pool needs a lifeguard. Go pick it up. Oh, oh wait, wait. <laughs> Rosalind, is the thylakoid membrane of a chloroplast just splendid? Wilkins, isn't it dangerous for one to use the entirety of their vocabulary in one sentence? But how can you not agree? Well, I'd agree, but then we'd both be wrong, wouldn't we now? <laughs> Wilkins, I do believe that if we keep doing the work we are doing here today, we will one day win the Nobel Prize. Really? Well, correction, I will win the Nobel Prize, and you, on the other hand, will be turned in as the missing link, because the last time I saw a face like yours, I gave it to Banana. Oh, but, but I like Bananas. Good for you, Wilkins. Oh. You know, Wilkins, I, I must apologize for my ex earlier yesterday. You actually do not resemble a chimpanzee. It's quite all right. Really? But, I mean, there really is only one problem with your face, and that is that I can see it. Wilkins, I need you to get out. I need you to get out now. I can't, I can't do this anymore. You know what? Fine. I'll go win the Nobel Prize. Go. On my own. Go do that, no, then. You go. need you. Oh. Oh. <laughs> well, you're about as useful as a leverless fulcrum. Wilkins, your stupidity is like the Calvin temperature. 
temperature scale. Absolute. Please tell me that you are an outlier and that our species is not doomed. Well, kids, just leave. Just leave. And you know what? While you're gone, why don't you attach those neurons of yours to your brain? Because that's what you're supposed to do, okay? You know what? I already have! Good riddance! So the two parted amicably. Rosalind Franklin found peace in her isolation where she successfully x-rayed DNA. Maurice Wilkins found consolidation with Francis Crick and James Watson. These three built a DNA molecule model based off of Rosalind Franklin's DNA x-ray for which they won the Nobel Prize without giving her any credit. It is my honor to present the Nobel Prize to Maurice Wilkins, Francis Crick, and James Watson for their groundbreaking DNA molecule model. You know, that Nobel Prize is supposed to be mine. What a, what a guy. <laughs> you. I am very honored to receive this award for I have worked many years to perfect my helix diagram. My ha! Ooh! In your face, Rosalind! Mmm! Yeah! We get the prize! We get the prize! And you did it! Oh. Sadly, soon after this, Rosalind passed away in 1958 at the age of 37 due to the harmful x-rays which gave her ovarian cancer. Bye.